Hi, I'm Laura Rooney and I'm the Curator of Paleontology here at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. I'm here to talk to you today about how we pull together all the pieces of a dinosaur skeleton in order to put it together on display. Did you know that we actually never find 100% of a dinosaur skeleton? So when we don't find all those pieces, we need to do a little more work to fill in all of those gaps in our skeletons. But before we talk about all the ways that we can fill in those gaps, let's discuss a little bit more about why those bones are missing in the first place. There are a lot of factors at play that lead to our bones becoming preserved into fossils. So the first thing to remember is that these bones were once part of a living animal. And I guarantee you that when this animal died, there would have been other dinosaurs around that would have been interested in making a quick meal out of it. So some dinosaurs may have come along and crunched through their bones, or others may have just snagged a piece of them off and taken them away to eat somewhere else. It's also possible that floodwaters could have come along and carried away parts of our dinosaur skeleton, or that the bones could have simply decayed over time because they weren't buried quickly enough to be preserved. Remember that the fossils we're working on in our lab are 150 million years old. That's a long time for something to go wrong before it can be fossilized. When these fossils get buried under rocks and layers of dirt, all of that rock and dirt can cause pressure on top of them that can crush them over time. So it's possible that these bones and fossils got destroyed before we even get the chance to see them. So that's why when paleontologists find a new fossil, every single fossil we find is extraordinary. Once we know what parts of our skeleton are missing, we can start working to fill in those gaps. So a couple ways that we can do this is by making copies of our fossils using 3D scanning or molding and casting. Sometimes, depending on what the fossil is, we can actually make our own copies and fill in our skeleton. So for example, if we have the left arm bone from our dinosaur, we can actually make a copy of that one and just make it a mirror image so we can fill in the right arm bone. When we can't make do with our fossils, that's when we need to start looking at other skeletons that we can use as fillers. If our species is a fairly well-known one, we can actually use skeletons of other individuals that are about the same age and size of our animal and use those bones to fill in the gaps. But if we found a new species, things get a little bit more complicated. That's when we need to start looking at animals that are closely related to our particular dinosaur. And then we can use whatever one we think is close enough that may be used as a good substitute. As you can see, it takes a lot of work to recreate a dinosaur skeleton, but it's worth it to get to see what these animals would have looked like when they were alive. Thanks for joining me for a behind the scenes look here at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis.